the next speaker, uh, Ms. Anna Surgenor uh, from Briam. Uh, she's with BRE Global, and uh, they are the uh, caretaker and uh, developer of the Briam standard of green building. Uh, we visited uh, BRE in uh, London and had, they have an amazing uh, pilot project uh, center where you can view a lot of the green buildings in action. Thank you very much and um, thanks for having us here. BRE stands for the Building Research Establishment. Um, we're a, sort of a long-term uh, standing company who form part of a, a charitable organization who look at, on one side, certification of products and um, schemes and also look at sort of testing. So we have experts um, in sort of daylighting ventilation who go through the process of research, development, um, testing, um, and consultancy. BREAM stands for the Building Research Establishment's Environmental Assessment Method. Um, it's been running for about 20 years now, and it's been focused at um, the UK construction market. Um, but gradually, um, within the last sort of um, three years, we're seeing a lot of interest from within Europe and further afield internationally. What is BREAM and what does it cover? Um, it can assess all building types, so we're looking at everything from the, the commercial sector, retail, offices, industrial, through to the sort of government sectors, which is the sort of education, schools, um, prisons, court buildings, um, and then also the domestic market as well. So the structure of the assessment method is based on a series of credits and the credit will look at something like assessing or measuring the daylight within a building um, and there are a series of credits that make up this overall environmental assessment method. So these are the, the issues that we're, we're looking at addressing in this um, environmental assessment method. We've got management of the building, so we're looking at whole life costing, um, we've got the health and well-being aspects, which are the sort of social impacts that um, we, we want to ensure that we have a sustainable building, but the occupants really enjoy using it, um, learning within it, and working within it. And it's, it, it's been proven that where you have um, an environment that the internal occupants enjoy using, um, then they'll perform better in terms of their learning experience or, or their work. Energy is obviously looking to reduce energy consumption. Um, and CO2 emissions um, and transport equally is looking to drive down the overall impact of, of sort of car travel between buildings. Water obviously is looking to minimize um, water consumption and materials and waste looks to um, reduce the impact of embodied energy within materials and we refer to a document called the Green Guide to Specification which has been through an extensive life cycle assessment um, process to, to look at the impacts of various um, construction products and materials. Land use and ecology, again, is looking at the sort of site-specific issues and, and reducing the impact on ecology. And then pollution is looking at the wider context of things like NOx and SOx um, and those sorts of emissions that um, occur as part of a building. So how do we assess it and, and, and how does it all work? I mean, there's so many issues. How can we come up with a, a final score at the end of a pass, good, very good, or excellent? Um, there are a number of, of, of credits, as I mentioned, um, and it's a case of, of going through and assessing each of those. And those credits sit within each of these issue categories. So it's a case of, of going through those credits and seeing how they apply um, to your building design and look to implement them where possible. Then you will come up with a score for each of your categories. So you may have, well, may have done really well in your energy section, but maybe not so well in your water section. So you can kind of see where you need to be focusing on to get your, your highest um, possible rating. Then we have what's called an environmental weighting, and, and this is um, sort of a, a particular piece of research that was undertaken by BRE, um, which looks at, um, it was a process where we approached um, a steering group um, and went out to gain sort of consensus-based research on, on where industry thought were the most important issues. Um, and then each of these issues were, were balanced out. So energy was seen to be more important than, say, another issue such as the health and well-being aspects. Um, and these were balanced out to give credit sort of a sense of importance. So your, your, your energy credit will be worth or more heavily weighted than, say, your, your water credit. So once you've come up with this, 
you've, you've gone through the process and allocated your, your environmental weighting, you'll come up with your, your final single score as a percentage um, that will give you your BREEAM rating. Okay, so at BRE, we, we don't carry out the assessments. We write the guidance and we're sort of owners of that guidance. Um, we work with industry. We have a sustainability board that oversees and is, is independent from us, so they ensure that what we are doing um, is consistent with what is happening in the industry. We train up independent licensed assessors, and they'll be um, consultancies um, who have engineers, architects, um, and they will carry out the um, assessment process and offer consultancy advice in terms of where you can um, improve your rating and in reduce your environmental impact on your building. BREAM is continuously progressing, um, evolving and improving through various means. Um, um, one key issue is that we look to stay ahead um, of the local building regulations. Now we've been obviously working quite, um, or focusing on the UK sector and we see, as we see building regulations continuously increase, we so also um, increase our benchmarks and so we're continuously pushing the market that bit harder. Now we're working um, more and more frequently with international um, organizations to, to set standards for them to assess their buildings and what we will do is tailor that guidance to the local reg regulations. So rather than take a UK version and put it into Romania, we will, we will work with technical and local experts to develop specific criteria that will look to improve the building over and above the local regulations. As I said, we're part of a charitable organisation, so any profit that we make goes back into this charity and then is disseminated into research and development and PhD um, projects as well. So from that, it gets fed back in um, into any work that we are doing um, at BRE. This graph kind of gives a, a nice illustration of what we're trying to do with BREAM. Um, you can see the number of buildings that are continuously going up and being built, um, as we've heard this morning. So we really need to look to see what those environmental impacts are. Um, within countries, you have your, your regulatory minimum, which is the red line. Um, what we're seeing is that the number of buildings that are being built just sit on that building. Some slip below it and don't quite meet those, but generally they're all sitting on that regulatory minimum. What we want to do is work with the mass market. We're not concerned about the exemplar buildings, but we want to get the whole mass market really working and driven towards the sort of aspirational end of, of environmental standards. So we're not going to say we want zero carbon. What we're going to do is, is edge the industry further forward into the aspirational end. Okay, just an outline of BREAM in the UK. Um, it was first um, developed in the 1990s. Um, it's evolved over time to cover a number of different sectors. Um, it was developed in partnership with the industry, so we had um, inputs from them as to how um, the, the scheme should um, perform and what it should contain. It was adopted by the UK government as a requirement as part of funding. Um, so now we're seeing pretty much um, a lot of government funded or all of government funded schools at the moment uh, are required to use BREAM um, as part of um, funding. We have 116,000 buildings that have been certified, so that includes the domestic sector as well. Um, and when I say certified, that means they've gone through our quality assurance process and they've been issued a certificate by us. We now have 714,000 registered assessments, so that means they're undergoing a BREAM assessment at the moment, um, and that's within the UK and, and further afield as well. We have a network of um, 2,200 BREAM assessors who are actively out there providing consultancy um, and BREAM assessments. So just to sum up, what are the benefits um, of using BREAM? What's the point? Why, why assess your building? Um, it will look to encourage or reduce environmental um, impacts, so it will it'll, it'll enable um, the reduction of environmental impacts. It improves functionality, flexibility and durability, so it's a, assessing key aspects of, of a design um, and construction of a building. It will look at the post-construction of the building and then also the, bre the, the assessment, the building, um, as it is in use. So the management and the operation of the building. 
It looks at higher user satisfaction, so if you're going to have a sustainable building that's addressing sort of key um, health and well-being aspects, as I said, hopefully your, your user will um, prefer to use the space. Um, it demonstrates an improved environmental performance, so from the design stage right through to the operation stage, and you can assess or, or measure that overall performance. And as we've seen from a number of, um, through a number of assessments that have um, are recently been undertaken, it improves letting, sales, um, letting and sales potential, um, and it's a real market um, sort of encouragement to, to have your, your building that has had a BREAM assessment and has acknowledged sort of key environmental issues. <coughs> 